our speaker for this morning. Technologist Amri Mazli, Senior Partner Engineer Petronas, Technologist Muhammad Halimi Osman, Senior Partner Engineer Petronas, Ms. Siti Hawa Hambali, Senior Partner Engineer Petronas, Mr. Muhammad Husairi Ibrahim, Senior Installation Engineer Petronas on this virtual platform. Praise to Allah, we have been graced by the chance to gather in this momentous ceremony. I would like to introduce myself. I am Nurima Nabila, SUMC for this slot. Before we start, a friendly reminder, if there are any questions during the discussion, kindly ask your question in the Zoom chat box and Facebook comment section. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Tenjus Dr. Nick Normuni Ramad Hassan, Senior Lecturer, Faculty of Engineering Technology, as our moderator for this slot, also lead our webinar for Topic 1 and Topic 2. The floor is yours, Doctor. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. Thank you very much for the Smith Iman as our MC today. So all the participants, uh, can you hear my voice clearly? Yeah, All right. Thank you very much for the feedback. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, International Construction Week at FTK 2022. Okay. I am, uh, before that, I've introduced myself. I'm, I'm uh, Dr. Nick Normunira Binti Ahmad Hassan, one of lecturer in the Faculty of Engineering Technology, University Tun Hussein on Malaysia Campus Pago. I will be as a moderator for this session today. So, uh, so for today, we have uh, two topics. Uh, we can discuss a sharing experience from the expert, uh, from the uh, first, our guest speaker from the Petronas, which is a uh, technologist, Ahmaduddin bin Mazli, Muhammad Haimi binti Othman, Siti Hawa binti Hambali, and Muhammad Usairi bin Ibrahim. So the slot uh, title we have to topic. Uh, okay, without the further ado, let me introduce for the our first speaker for our first topic, which is the title Offshore Transportations and Installation for Shallow and Deep Water Pipeline. Okay, the first our speaker, let me introduce technologist Aymanuddin Ben Mazli, senior engineer, senior partner engineer at Petronas. He actually has a bachelor degree in mechanical engineering from University Technology of Petronas on 2004. She had, he has a cumulative 17 years of experience in upstream oil and gas industry throughout the development and production phases. He also expert in technical knowledge and has a capability in facilities engineering and project management project competency in strategic planning, project solving, and decision making. He also has experience in engineering and project management, including managing fast rate upstream development project throughout the whole process development from the initial concept identification, front end engineering, detailed engineering, procurement, construction and offshore installation, hookup and commissioning, and startup. Okay, for the, our next speaker, our next speaker, Muhammad Halimi Bid Osman, he also was senior pipe engineer at Petronas. He also graduated from University Technology of Petronas, but in Bachelor in Engineering Civil. He has 17 years of experience in offshore and offshore pipeline. His main tasks including the FEED, detailed design, procurement, fabrication, pipeline coating, offshore installation and pipeline commissioning. He also involved in the client site wrap onboard installation bus during pipeline activities and also onboard work bus during platform shutdown campaign. So with the opportunity, we can sharing the uh, for our topic uh, today. So that's uh, I welcome for our guest speaker for the first slot so that the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, Doc. Now I, I share the the uh, I share the screen, yeah.
Okay, you can see my screen, yeah? Okay. Clear. Okay. <coughs> okay, Assalamualaikum and very good morning. Uh, my name is Muhammad Helmi bin Osman. Uh, I'm the senior power line engineer uh, from uh, GTS Petronas. Uh, together with me, uh, my colleague uh, Aymaruddin bin Mazli, uh, we gonna share on the uh, offshore transportation and installation TNI for shallow and deep water pipeline. Okay, uh, there the the, the uh, simple uh, sharing today. We are, we gonna have uh, only uh, four main part. Uh, first on the uh, shallow and deep water pipeline system. Then we go to the pipeline uh, offshore pipeline installation for shallow water. Uh, uh, then we go to the deep water de uh, water depth definition, and also the water pipeline and other installation. The first two parts will be presented by me, and uh, the second, the the third and fourth part will be by my my colleague, uh, Mr. Madudin. Okay, uh, this is the 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 simple uh, definition uh, for the pipeline system. I have to 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 give you some idea before we go to the installation part. Uh, basically, the pipeline uh, they have uh, two uh, main parts. The first one is the pipeline, the the horizontal part of the the system, uh, and also, uh, the second one is the riser, which is the vertical part of the 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 pipeline system. So, uh, in the pipeline system, too. Uh, there are a few ancillaries, uh, which uh, which are valves, fitting, flanges, and also for the risers, uh, we have the the uh, hanger flange and also the clamps that hold the 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 riser in the uh, vertical position. On top of that, we have the the elbow and bends and also the fittings for the the panel system ni. Okay, uh, first we go to the pal uh, offshore pipeline installation. For the, the the first part will be uh, for the shallow water. Okay, uh, for this uh, presentation, uh, I gonna uh, talk about the installation method. Uh, but uh, before that, uh, I just uh give us uh, some 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 overview on the on the material material part of the the pipeline because uh this installation method sebenarnya uh depends on the material juga so we have the rigid pipeline uh we have the flexible pipeline and also we have the non metallic pipeline but for this presentation uh i going to focus more on the rigid pipeline lah because on the flexible pipe uh, will be presented uh, for the second slot later. Okay, for this uh, rigid pipe line, we have uh, four uh, types of the installation method. The S-lay, the J-lay, uh, relay, and also uh, towing method. Okay. Uh, for this S-lay method, uh, S-lay method ni is the uh, the installation in the horizontal position on the pipe lay bash tu and then we will uh, we'll fit into the sea by moving the the vessel or the pipe lay bash forward and then the assemble uh, between the st stinger which is the, the end part of the bash tu uh, to the seabed in the S shape position, uh, S shape uh, configuration. So that's why uh, it is called uh, S-lay method. Uh, the advantage, all the operation tu, uh, on the horizontal part so, uh, on the lineup, welding, RT, field joint can be done at the at the horizontal operation in one line at the multiple station. So, uh, apa? The 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 installation too is very efficient lah because they can do in one line. Eh? Cuma the disadvantage it is not uh, meant for deep water because if we go for deeper water, uh, they require bigger tensioner and also longer 
uh, stringer uh, to perform the part play. So uh, this Esley ni memang meant for uh, shallow water. Okay, this is the configuration, uh, simple configuration. As I uh, as I mentioned just now, uh, the the welding station, the the X-ray station, and also the field joint coating station will be at the one line here. Uh, and also, uh, this is the we call stinger. Stinger ni the the whole the 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 the, the pipeline tu uh, for the S uh, ship configuration tu. This is the yang hold the, the the weight of the pipeline tu. But you can see here, uh, it is the anchor anchor type of bush. Uh, no, but sekarang ni we have uh, other option which is dynamic position, DP. Kalau DP ni, they will know uh, anchor punya requirement lah. They can uh, position by the DP system to itself. So the 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 work will be uh, faster lah. And also you can see diver here. Uh, normally now we we have the the divers lah. Maksudnya kita kita guna uh, ROV to monitor the the uh, the condition of the part uh, part blade itu dekat dekat sea bed. Okay, uh, here the the activities dekat atas uh, pipe bridge tu. Uh, here the the line up, line up station. After line up station, we have the welding station, then S3 before we go to the uh, pier joint coating. And dekat belakang ni will be the uh, stinger. Well, uh, welding station normally uh, they have a uh, minimum 3 lah 3 welding station uh, the 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 uh, more numbers of welding station will be better for the installation lah maksudnya dia akan uh, faster dia punya installation rate lah uh, in between the S3 dengan field joint ni normally kita ada apa ni repair punya station lah dekat sini katakanlah kalau Uh, from the X-ray punya result tu, welding tu not not apa ni uh, sufficient for the our requirement for to meet our requirement, requirement. So the the uh, repair will be done in between the the X-ray at the field joint. Okay, this is some pictures for the apa ni uh, X-ray activities. So we have the the uh, Loading, uh, internal cleaning, line up, uh, bevel before the the perform the welding they have to bevel the 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 surface of the end pipeline uh, pipeline end though. and here the welding after welding we go to X-ray okay macam yang saya tadi after X-ray biasanya if required they can do repair lah uh, after after X-ray tu then they apply HSS and also uh, foam injection. Uh, FFA, uh, HSS uh, and foam ni is part of the apa ni part of the uh, field joint coating lah. They apply the 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 balut dengan HSS and then they inject the foam uh, dekat dekat sini before they do holiday test uh, and then go to the to the water lah. Okay, kalau dekat sini, uh, this is the startup of the the apa, the pipe blade. Dia akan uh, hold the bowstring uh, dekat platform ni, bowstring line here, and then dia akan dia akan tarik towards the forward. Uh, tapi uh, for the bowstring method ni, they have to check on the uh, platform punya integrity lah. The jacket integrity is it the uh, the uh, can hold this load from from uh, this uh, pipe blade bash. If not, uh, they have to do the other method uh, using the the main anchor. The main anchor they tak they tak ada bowstring. The they just anchor dekat dekat si bed. Cuma if you use the other method tu, dia punya dia punya uh, apa? 
rework activity masa you nak install the riser tu akan akan banyak lagi lah compare to this uh, bolstering method ni dia dah near to the platform so lesser lah dia punya rework tu nanti Okay, this is some picture on the, on the apa, dekat uh, stinger Ni stinger uh, before dia go masuk dalam dalam seawater And also this is the, the, uh, the apa, uh, tensioner yang pegang, pegang the, the platform before dia, dia masuk dalam, dalam uh, sting, dekat stinger tu Okay, this is the the store on method. Store on method, uh, store on method ni is uh, to do the the riser installation. Riser riser installation. Uh, store store on method eh. Okay, kalau you see dekat sini, uh, ini after we complete the installation, the pipe blade bash will come back to do the the riser installation so uh, dekat sini uh, we call this line is david's david's ni akan akan angkat the the pipe line ni uh, and then the the end ni will be on the deck before we do we well to the uh, apa uh, riser and then dia akan after welding tu dia akan approach the the platform and install the 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 riser stock on method tu lah dekat dekat platform kalau de, kalau picture saya macam ni lah lebih kurang ini after dia dah dia, dia dah welding dia akan dia uh, platform tu akan slowly uh, apa ni uh, move towards the the platform after that dia akan uh, bila dah dah in position dia akan apa pasang dekat dekat riser clamp and then uh, complete lah dia punya kerja tu uh, but but this activity ni is very 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 slow activity you nampak dalam uh, six stage ni six stages tapi will take you around seven to ten days to complete and this also to ensure you do this activity ni pun dalam very calm punya weather lah uh, because uh, the activity ni uh, prone to weather lah kalau weather not good then the activity will will be impacted lah <coughs> okay jelly ni uh, the second method is jelly jelly ni dia, dia uh, different dengan SLA uh, where the the activities tadi tu maksudnya uh, dia punya uh, welding dia punya x-ray repair uh, and also F, uh, Field join akan akan buat dekat the same the same uh, location. Okay, kalau tengok gambar ni, uh, this is a jelly method. Uh, dia J J punya configuration lah. That's why we call uh, J. So dekat sini dia akan buat all the the welding, X-ray semua dekat one position. Cuma the advantage dia uh, uh, dia uh, tak prone to the uh, external punya loads lah uh, current and also uh, wave sebab the the apa the position uh, semua dia buat dekat dalam 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 uh, bash macam ni so dia tak perlukan uh, stinger macam uh, SLA tadi cuma the advantage dia dia, dia punya dia punya um, activity ni akan jadi much much slow lah because uh, dia punya all the the activities ni dekat dekat one one uh, one location and also this uh, jelly ni is more suitable to deep, deep water lah okay, kalau kita tengok sini dia punya dia punya jelly uh, advantage dia uh, tensioner can be much lower uh, for the deep water uh, where kalau kalau kita pakai SLA tadi dia akan akan apa a uh, require more tensioner dekat dekat a uh, di water kan a uh, tensioner point closer to bash and 
spans are shorter okay span tu yang yang ni lah yang yang this this uh, section ni this section ni is uh, something yang span ni is something uh, kita kena monitor juga sebab this is the the weak point of the pipeline where you can you can buckle lah kalau kita kalau kita tak 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 betul-betul do the the proper engineering uh, so no stingers required Uh, uh, less exposed to the wave action uh, sebab kita tak pakai stinger tadi dia uh, less exposed to the the uh, wave so it is uh, apa ni for better punya ni lah better punya option untuk 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 uh, deeper water uh, this advantage dia uh, macam saya sebut tadi all the welding and semua and also all the activities dekat one station uh, so dia punya ni is uh, very much uh, slower lah compared to to uh, Ashley yang uh, sebelum ni <coughs> okay next we go to relay uh, relay ni I I don't want to to emphasize more because uh, relay ni uh, it is not a um, Uh, famous punya option for the rigid pump line uh, kita uh, this relay ni kita banyak pakai untuk flexible pump line which will be explained more uh, uh, for the next session by our flexible pump line team uh, cuma uh, this relay ni is doable for for rigid pump line also uh, kalau kalau you You tengok dekat sini, I uh, can be done up to six, uh, 16 inch punya pipe line But I think uh, dekat mission memang tak tak ada Kita belum pernah lagi pakai relay ni untuk untuk rigid pipe line Tapi kalau ke oversea basically is more famous to the uh, Apa uh, Apa ni uh, Smaller pipe line lah maksudnya 6 inch ke bawah lah Uh, 16 inch ni actually doable tapi orang jarang jarang buat lah it is uh, too too big lah bila 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 uh, bigger part line dia akan uh, shorter shorter the the length lah nanti so it is not a good option for the rigid lah actually kalau kita tengok kat sini uh, dia sama juga macam flexible punya method maksudnya dia pakai drum ni or we call corazel uh, this This activity of reeling ni kita buat dekat dekat port ataupun dekat kilang and then after complete reel ni dia akan bring this uh, reel ni to the offshore and then uh, dia akan uh, apa ni turunkan uh, the pipe line tu through the uh, dia ada juga lah sting and so on lah cuma uh, dekat sini uh, this option ni faster sebab the welding RT apa semua dia dah dia dah uh, perform earlier maksudnya dekat sini masa dekat offshore nanti is apa ni only the installation part saja so uh, technically the the option ni is faster lah compared to uh, SLA and JLA previously ok macam itu kat sini dia punya advantage Uh, dia dia boleh uh, give a cost efficient untuk installation uh, cuma uh, uh, and also faster punya punya ni punya uh, operation cuma dia punya ni first on the dia punya disadvantage first on the size uh, and also apa ni prone to to apa ni uh, apa ni maksudnya kalau ada kalau ada uh, incident ke offshore tu dia punya dia punya ni is uh, time consuming lah untuk kita buat apa ni repair and so on lah sebab dia dah dah pre 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 do before kita sampai ke offshore kan okey the last method is the tow method Okay, tow method ni basically uh, kita ada uh, several uh, option untuk tow method Tow method ni uh, is kita 
is apa ni kita do the uh, welding and also uh, fill uh, extra and fill join siap siap and then kita kita use the uh, tugboat to a- attach the the apa the pipeline tu kat tugboat and then kita bring to the location ha, maksudnya dia, dia tak pakai pipe lebash uh, this is the uh, actually this is the conventional method kalau you talk about 70s or 60s punya zaman dulu before we have the proper pipe lebash uh, this is the uh, conventional method dulu lah but still uh, orang guna this method for the shorter pipe line and also uh, apa ni uh, at the at the prone at, at the apa macam swampy area and so on tu where the bus tak boleh enter Uh, this is the the method the ni lah the option lah tu method ni. So tu method ni uh, macam sebut tadi uh, satu uh, apa ni less than seven seven km, but kalau dekat offshore kita akan go for less than two two km lah. Two km uh, sesuai lah untuk untuk tu method ni. Uh, more than that kita akan pakai normal pak beli bus juga lah. Okay, uh, and then kita akan attach to the buoyancy tank and then buoyancy tank ni uh, dia akan attach to the uh, apa ni, all the uh, part, part, part length tu kita akan attach dengan buoyancy tank untuk ensure dia 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 float and also after that kita akan attach dengan uh, dua vessel or tak boat and then tow to the location Okey, dia punya ni ada 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 several type of uh, tow lah. Surface tow, below surface tow, uh, near bottom tow and bottom tow. Uh, tapi on our operation, we will go for this surface tow lah. Sebab surface tow ni is uh, apa ni? Uh, uh, more easy to to control the 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 pipe line tu because we don't want the pipe tu to buckle halfway kan so by having this surface tow ni kita akan dapat monitor condition the pipe line tu kalau kita go to other option ni kita tak nampak on the pipe line tu punya condition uh, and then kalau you see here uh, this are the buoyancy tanks yang attach tu lah to ensure this apa ni this uh, pipe line ni float throughout the 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 operation tu and also numbers and location the the uh, the policy tank tu kena, kita kena buat analysis lah engineering analysis and also uh, dia nak detach tu pun kena buat analysis juga how to ensure the the detach tu tak 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 apa tak tak bakal dekat line bila dia nak dia nak turunkan dekat line through the seabed nanti. Okay, advantage dia uh, first dia uh, pak melayan tu sama macam macam apa ni macam uh, real relay tadi dia dah dia dah apa ni pak melayan tu dia dah welded dia dah uh, tested dia dah uh, buat extra and also dia buat hadut dah dah siap hadut test before dia bring to the location maksudnya dia 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 reduce kan activity tu lah before uh, at the at the apa uh, kita punya field uh, and also uh, dia tak ada limit on the size tapi dia ada limit on the the length lah macam yang cakap tadi okay disadvantage dia uh, if i can say uh, dia memang Uh, prone to weather lah sebab macam ni kan kalau kalau you 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 talk about 2 uh, km punya punya length between this uh, apa ni tot tot uh, tak boat ni uh, kalau ada weather apa semua memang easily dia akan dia akan apa dia akan uh, uh, patah this this apa ni part melayan lah uh, but For this option, uh, normally kita akan uh, buat 
um, untuk recently kita buat untuk kita punya non metric pipe. Kita pernah buat juga untuk rigid pipe tapi this this option ni recently kita buat untuk non metric pipe uh, yang dekat uh, SKO. And then that operation tu success lah. Okay, uh, now we go to water depth definition. I think I I pass the the uh, floor to my colleague, uh, Mr. Madudin. Right, uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. Okay, uh, next to me. Okay, right. Okay, uh, just now Encik Elmi uh, talk about uh, uh, shallow water installation and then I'm going go, I'm going to touch on deep water uh, installation. Alright, so before that uh, let us understand apa tu shallow water and uh, deep water. So basically uh, in Petronas uh, uh, the, uh, the range of deep water considered uh, for, for, for deep water is more than 200 meter water depth uh and for ultra deep uh, is more than 1500 uh, meter water depth so basically uh the the the, the different is uh, uh in in uh, when we want to 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 reach to reach the 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 water depth lah the seabed so uh for for water depth that is below than uh, 200 or 300 uh, we normally use a diving system and for deep water where this uh, diving system or, uh, cannot uh, is not feasible so basically we normally use a remote uh, remote uh, uh, autonomous vehicle lah, rov and uh, also for water depth that is more than 2000 meter normally we use uh, rov and AUV which is autonomous uh, underwater vehicle for subsurfacing next semi okay uh, the water track record uh, around the world uh, glo globally uh, basically the range is uh, mostly at uh, around 250 up to 2500 uh, meter water depth uh, but there are also uh, the, the industry is now going towards deeper which is uh, about uh, 3000 3, meter water depth uh, and this are basically based, based on the type of, of the uh, part line uh, that, that, that we use which is a uh, flexible hybrid uh, uh, SCR and uh, also TTR we will touch uh, this uh, detail in the in the in the next slide next to me okay these are the deep water part line evolution uh, so basically it has been started since uh, 1980 uh, since 1980 dah start dah uh, the industry going to towards uh, deep water uh, uh, at that time it's just about uh, uh, 200 uh, meter and now uh, we are almost at 3000 meter water depth lah next me okay the water pipeline and riser installation next okay what are the challenges uh, uh, just now here uh, me talk about uh, shallow shallow water challenges but uh, now uh, we are going deeper so what are the challenges uh, basically uh, of course when we go uh, more deeper so we need we need to always monitor the stresses and also the strain uh, along the pipe and what are the basically uh, factors that uh, govern the installation is uh, basically our method the pipeline size uh, when we talk about size of course we also talk about weight and also uh, the external uh, factors that we need to consider is the current and also wave 
because we we are is in, in, in installing a, a underwater pipeline uh, and then uh, we need to also uh, consider the vessel uh, tensioning cap capacity because of the deep water the the long pipeline the deep the deeper pipeline uh, have a higher uh, tension uh, compared to shallow, shallow water uh, because of the sus suspended length uh, in 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 uh, uh, underwater uh, and then uh, uh, for deep water we also utilize uh, S Lake and uh, J Limited lah. Uh. Next me. Okay, these are the type of uh, deep water pipeline solution. Uh, basically, uh, is the same as as per sh uh, shallow water. The the uh, this method is basically when we want to choose which method we what we want to use is uh, uh, basically due, uh, that bit, uh, depends on on water depth. For S S lay, it can we can we can install in shallow and and deep water, but it cannot be too deep, uh, let's say about uh, uh, 200 or 300 meter water depth, we might uh, we might want to cons consider to use uh, J lay method because S lay method, uh, uh, the, the, the catenary, the suspended length uh, will be uh, uh, huge uh, and J lay, J lay method basically we, the, the, the set band is basically uh, right on the or on on the city bed. Okay, and then we have a real system, uh, normally reeling system we use to install flexible pipe, and also a smaller size of uh, carbon steel pipe. And then catenary two uh, is the same method as as potentially water what has uh, JLM mentioned before. Next. Okay. Uh, Basically, this slide we talk about uh, uh, dynamic positioning system for deep water, uh, deep water part of vessel. So basically, in deep water, uh, we may we we may uh, we we cannot uh, uh, utilize or we ha we may have a challenge uh, in utilizing con conventional mooring. Uh, or anchoring uh, uh, or anchoring uh, method for vessel and uh, uh, we may consider to use uh, a dynamic positioning vessel lah. All right next me okay these are the basically the advantage and disadvantage of anchoring oh, system and hello? also for hello Uh, salam cik. Uh, cik, saya tengah ada meeting presentation lah. Ada benda urgent ke cik? Okay. 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 Uh, these are basically the uh, so, uh, uh, differences lah between anchoring and dynamic uh, positioning. Anchoring normally we use in sh uh, shallow water uh, when we use anchor to hold the pipe. Dynamic, po uh, dynamic positioning we use in, in the water lah. Uh, uh, when we use uh, thrusters to to hold hold the the, the vessel. Okay, next me. Okay, uh, shallow water compared to deep water part laying. Uh, these are basically the 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 criteria that we we need we need to monitor lah. Number one is the vessel tension uh, tensioner. As per I mentioned before, shallow shallow water have less tension than deep water, and also we need we need to monitor the top tension uh, of the pipe. Uh, for shallow water, basically it's a low top tension requirement lah due to short short uh, suspended uh, part line. Uh, and uh, for deep water, uh, we may have a top tension due to long suspended uh, part line. And uh, and then uh, okay, I've talked about um, uh, uh, moving anchored or, or DP vessel, and then uh, we need to monitor the stinger length. Uh, basically, these are the 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 length that we use to achieve the radius of curvature lah, to avoid stresses uh, along along the pipeline. 
and then uh, tie in welding and uh, free span and also uh, en environment loads lah uh, uh, differences between shallow water and and deep water shallow water might be less harsh environment compared compared to deep water uh, and uh, deep water basically we have a more severe loads lah uh, from the en 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 environment uh, basically uh, due to wave and current okay next me Give me next. Uh, all right. Uh, these are the basically you talk about uh, the deep water rises. Uh, we have a few uh, type of rises uh, to to connect from uh, sea. Uh, uh, sea uh, the part on seabed uh, towards uh, our basically host, whether it's a uh, platforms or. It's a floating uh, structures. Uh, it can be classified either rigid or flexible or hybrid. Uh, basically, we have uh, top tension riser, which is TTR, and then we have steel catenary riser, SCR. We have flexible riser, and also basically we have a hybrid riser. Hybrid riser is basically we, uh, we have uh, some sort of like top tension riser. Uh, in combination uh, with uh, uh, catenary uh, riser or flexible riser. Next. Okay, the, uh, these are basically uh, to give more details on the deep water riser type uh, and also the, uh, the type of hose that we normally use in, in deep water to 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 connect uh, the seabed uh, uh, part line and and uh, uh, the the host facilities. So basically, the host facilities normally we uh, we have fixed platform, uh, or we have compliant tower, uh, or we have uh, tension legger platform, and then we have mini uh, tension legger platform, and then we have spars. Uh, uh, we have a floating uh, protection system or, or, or APSO. Uh, basically, this the type of uh, this floating structures is uh, governed uh, normally by water depth, and also uh, the development concept lah that 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 we we want to 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 develop uh, the our, our field. Okay, next. Okay, this are uh, more detail on steel catenary riser, top tension riser, flexible riser, and hybrid riser. So basically, steel catenary riser (SCR) uh, is uh, most attractive lah due to capex, and but the the disadvantage is is not uh, relocatable. If you want to relocate to to uh, uh, other location, uh, top tension riser. Uh, uh, mainly uh, use if if we we use the the floating structure uh, TLP tension legged platform uh, for flexible basically is relocate uh, relocatable uh, and then you have advantage on basically on uh, floating structure that have more uh, dynamic uh, movement. But the diameter is uh, li uh, limit up to 16, uh, 16 inch only lah for for the water. For hybrid, hybrid riser uh, is is expensive, uh, but it's reloc relocatable. Uh, this type of riser uh, uh, in industry uh, basically they use in the deeper deep, deeper uh, section section of uh, water depth lah. Normally two thousand or three thousand meter water depth. Okay, next. Okay, uh, riser section factors. Uh, uh, there are few factors that we need to consider before we select the type of riser that we want to use. Basically, what are the platform type? Uh, as per what I mentioned before, uh, basically we need we need to know what are the floating structure that we we want to use lah. And then what are the expected weather condition, uh, project timeline, reliability. Uh, debt to ocean floor, basically the water debt, uh, financial facility, 
uh, diameter and operating pressure uh, and, uh, fluid and uh, corrosive uh, properties lah. Uh, basically what are type of uh, medium or hydrocarbon that 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 uh, we want to to transport okay next okay deep water uh, rise solution startup method uh, basically there are three option we can use either we want to wet part or uh, and then uh, uh, whether we want to first end installation or second end uh, installation so basically uh, wet part is a uh, uh, basically, we we allow the riser to rest on seabed, and then uh, once we want to install the riser on towards the floating structure, we pull up to the floating uh, and and hang off. Uh, uh, okay, and then uh, for first end installation, uh, basically we hand the riser off the floater, and then we install the part away from the floater uh, uh, with the static portion of the riser. Uh, as last to be installed lah before we transition the the installation to uh, basically part uh, part line and termination or or the other floor line floor line section lah. Okay, second end uh, installation uh, basically start at the end of uh, flat or or at at the other end of of the of the pipe lah. Okay, and then once the entire riser has been installed, uh, then uh, it will be lifted lifted up uh, to the floaters and hang off hang off hang off section of the floating structure. Next. <coughs> okay, this are basically just to show uh, on the static catenary riser. Uh, the the configuration and uh, basically what are the uh, critical element that that we need to consider lah when we when we do uh, installation of, of of this type of type of uh, riser. Um, basically, uh, the the most important uh, the, the 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 challenging part is to 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 maintain the configuration of of uh, this uh, of this uh, type of riser lah. Because uh, stick and riser, uh, it prone to basically uh, dynamic response and also fatigue, fatigue and uh, stresses stresses uh, along along the pipe. Okay, next. Okay, uh, these are basically uh, to show some of the ancillaries that that uh, we may use uh, in stick and riser to connect uh, the riser to to floating structure so basically we have a taper stress joint and also a fle a flexible uh, flex uh, flex joint okay next next all right these are the uh, detail uh, on the ancillaries uh, so basically we have a uh, uh, VIV uh, helical straight and also VIV fairing. So basically, v, this VIV is we want to counter the 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 impact or, or the loads uh, from the environment, which is uh, which is the wave and and current. Uh, uh, we basically we want to me uh, mitigate lah the effect on the vortex shading. With with uh cause uh, uh the VIV uh VIV is basically a vortex uh, in induced vibration, so when this riser is exposed to to wave, wave and current, uh, uh, it uh, basically it also exposed to the to this uh, vibration lah. When we exposed to uh, vibration, it will uh, exposed to uh, uh, fatigue and uh, stress uh, stresses lah. So basically, we use this type of uh, ancillaries uh, to counter uh, to to avoid this to to happen lah on on our uh, rises. Okay, next. Okay, top tension riser uh, uh, is basically is a vertical uh, oriented uh, rises. Uh, is normally used for drilling uh, drilling rises lah production drilling. Uh, uh, 
bas- uh, basically is as uh, it may it may it may have uh, multiple rises lah to to uh, to cater for for the production and uh, it use buoyancy cans to maintain the bu- bu- buoyancy uh, of of this uh, type of type of riser next me okay. okay flexible riser uh, normally we use uh, uh, in uh, 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 more more uh, we use in type of uh, protein structure that have more than dynamic uh, movement such as uh, APSO uh, uh, it have a uh, uh, few layers uh, to basically to contain the uh, the loads uh, the hoop hoop, hoop, uh, hoop uh, stresses and also the external uh, pressures uh, uh, for of, of the pipe lah. okay next Okay, this uh, uh basically uh, uh, just to show typical configuration of the flexible riser. So basically, uh, we we use uh, buoyancy for for the uh, to maintain the configuration of the flexible riser. The the typical uh, configuration is lazy wave uh, configuration. Uh, 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 as, it's, uh, as it's shown here, it have a few uh, layers lah uh, for the uh, uh, flexible to to operate. Okay, next. Okay, these are the basic accessories for the flexible riser. We have uh, end fittings to connect between uh, one section of flexible pipe to another section of flexible pipe, and then we have bend stiff stiffener at uh, floating structure uh, when we want to depart uh, uh, basically we, we call it uh, we have uh, this uh, departure angle lah when we want to depart from the from the floating uh, floating structure or, or uh, platforms next okay uh, these are the, uh, the hang of collar uh, basically we use hang of, uh, hang of collar uh, on uh, FSO and also other other type of uh, uh, protein structure, uh, and then uh, we have bend stiffener to connect the riser to towards the protein structure, and also the, uh, we use a buoyancy module to to maintain the the configuration of of this uh, uh, flexible uh, risers. Next. Okay, uh, we also use a uh, uh, pulling or test head uh, for installation. And also bend uh, bend resistor, resistor to to avoid uh, over bending during during uh, installation. Over bend can 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 expose the pipe uh, to to uh, unwanted uh, stresses lah. Okay, next next. Okay, free standing hybrid riser. Uh, uh, norm- uh, normally the diameter can be up to twenty two inch uh it uh, use uh, uh basically carbon steel part line and also flexible pipe uh, as as com- combination uh yeah, as per mentioned earlier it uh, basically we use this in uh, uh atra atra the uh, the water uh, uh installation of the near uh, of the rises okay next Alright, uh, with that, uh, uh, I end uh, my sharing uh, session and I pass to moderator. Okay, uh, thank you very much for our guest speaker, Mr. Amanuddin Mazli uh, for the a great sharing experience uh, for the uh, shallow water and also the deep water. Also, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Muhammad Ahilmi bin Osman uh, for the um, sharing working experience according to Sail Water. So basically, uh, I believe that our audience today having the uh, new experience uh, towards the uh, expertise in the uh, shallow water and also in deep water pipeline installation, which is what can I, I can see that they have a few methods. We say uh, S 
meter, uh, J meter, S meter, T meter, and also the uh, parameter comparison when we want to install uh, the uh, pipeline in the offshore itself. Uh, so uh, for the um, Q and A session, we can record. Uh, we hold first for this uh, topic, and then we can have the uh, the Q and A session at the end of the topic too. Is it okay for for uh, you, sir? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, so we uh, move to our the next topic, which is uh, can cover about the, the experience, uh, the expertise from the Petronas. We, the topic is flexible pipeline of offshore applications, which is we can share with two our guest speaker, uh, Siti Hawa binti Hambali and also Muhammad Usaire bin Ibrahim. Without further ado, I would like to uh, introduce our guest speaker, okay. The first is uh, Ms. Siti Hawa Binti Hambali. She is a senior pipeline engineer at Petronas. Uh, she graduated from University of Southampton, UK, United Kingdom on uh, 2011. Uh, she has 11 of the working experience at the Petronas. She uh, actually involved in pipeline project. Uh, one of the pipeline project involved served in GTS uh, under the Department Project Delivery and Technology, PDNT. Uh, she also conducted several integrity studies uh, and audit, uh, also involved in many projects related with pipeline manage replacement. Uh, for example, the replacement of rigid carbon steel pipeline to flexible pipeline in gas lift service and also have the uh, involved in the analysis uh, computation fluke dynamic CFD analysis to determine feasibility, uh, feasibility of flexible pipeline for production evacuations. Okay, so the background for the uh, second, our guest speaker, Muhammad Usaire bin Ibrahim. He is actually a senior installation engineer uh, in the, at the Petronas. He graduated from University Technology of Petronas on 2009. He has uh, 12 years of working experience uh, in installation engineering in oil and gas with involvement in offshore transportation and installations. He also covered uh, pipelines, flexible platform, uh, free commissioning and offshore pipeline installation. He also involved in many more projects uh, according to Petronas, a part of project which is a pipeline replacement, uh, flexible pipeline as a lead engineer for T and I scope during bidding and also as a uh, uh, riser guard uh, installations as a lead engineer for the TNR engineering, preparation work and education. So uh, without the further view, I would like to call our guest speaker to do for the second topic today, which is flexible pipeline of offshore application. So uh, welcome so that the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, moderator, uh, Mr. Nick, Nick Normunira. Okay, thank you yes. very much. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Uh, today, myself, Siti Hawa Binti Hambali, with my partner. Uh, slightly, uh, Hawa. Yeah. Okay. We would like to present on the unbounded flexible pipeline for offshore installation. So, our colleague previously, uh, Mr. Aima and also Mr. Helmi, has presented the general ideas of uh, pipelines that we have in, this, in the industry. Uh, however, for our focus today, uh, our team we will only present on the unwanted flexible pipeline. Okay, next, see? Next. All right. Uh, as Nick, Ms. Nick Normunira just now actually uh, introduced uh, both of us, uh, I would like to also introduce myself. Uh, uh, I graduated from University of Southampton uh, and joined Petronas in November 2011. This is my 11th year in the industry. I have seven years experience as uh, uh, working in Sarawak asset uh, as part of the operation team. And in 2018, 
I moved to uh, our group technical services, uh, GTS, and uh, was seconded to the project team uh, works under the DPRP department. So at the moment, uh, we are overlooking several pipeline replacement projects. Uh, uh, and the one that we have installed previously last year in 2011, uh, 2021, uh, during the MCO period, we installed two pipelines, uh, which is PL429 and PL430. So today, in our presentation, you may say that uh, we very much will actually relate to the examples uh, of PL429 and 430 that we conducted. Okay, next year. So this handsome guy in the picture, Oh, wait, you uh, boleh pusing balik tak? Uh, previous slide. Okay, so for this slide, when you tengok my picture, uh, I memang purposely uh, bergambar dengan our flexible pipeline punya prototype. So the ones that we have in the picture is the prototypes that we have in the office. So that is a prototype of PL430 punya pipeline. Okay, so this later uh, we will present also in this presentation. Okay, next. So this handsome colleague of mine uh, is named Muhammad Hosairi bin Ibrahim. He is a senior installation engineer. So uh, it, for pipeline uh, uh, for project, we work closely with other disciplines as well. And uh, for for pipeline installation, uh, the pipeline design team uh, will closely work and uh, relate with our installation engineers. So we are like uh, very close partners. Okay, so uh, Mr. Husairi, also known as Yi, uh, actually uh, graduated from University of Technology Petronas in 2009. Uh, he is currently working with the uh, installation uh, team with 12 years working experience as installation engineer in oil and gas uh, and the main involvement of offshore transportation and installation. So, kalau nak tanya pasal kapal, uh, nak tanya pasal macam mana cara nak install, apa analisis yang dia perlu buat, Ah, ini kepakaran uh, Husairi lah. Ah, okay. Alright, next. That is just a brief uh, introduction of ourselves. Orang kata kalau tak kenal maka tak cinta. So I just briefly introduce myself. And uh, this today's session uh, is supposed to be a mix of English and Malay. So I hope you wouldn't mind uh, that I also uh, speak in Malay uh, along the way. Uh, and Kalau Yi terlepas kecek kelater tu, uh, harap maaf lah sebab Abel ni Abel kelater. <laughs> Alright. So an introduction to the flexible pipeline system. Okay Yi, next. Alright. So before we move further, it is very, uh, uh, I think when we sebut pipeline, 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 uh, the first question people will pop up is what is pipeline? This is especially uh, the main question that I get, especially if I do not uh, work in the oil and gas industry and uh, with uh, very fresh to the industry as well. Uh, so people start questioning. You talk about pipeline but what it is actually. Okay, kalau kita tengok dalam gambar ni, in this picture we can see at the top uh, left hand corner, there is a truck. It's a Petronas uh, truck, it, yang, the one that transport our uh, hydrocarbon uh, from uh, our upper uh, distribution center to all the pipe gas stations. So this is a track that we often see at the highway. And then uh, at the bottom of it, uh, kita nampak it's a railway truck, uh, railway punya uh, transportation uh, mode. This is also another mode of transportation to transport hydrocarbon from point A to point B. The next one we have on the top right hand corner is actually a tanker. It's an oil tanker. Uh, to actually uh, upper take all the the oil, uh, hydrocarbon that they require uh, and then uh, move to where they intend it to be. Okay, and the bottom most uh, on the right hand corner is this is a picture of a pipeline before, this is after we lay it, uh, before we trench it, before we buried it again. Uh, okay, so this line, this is an onshore punya pipeline punya picture lah. So pipeline itself uh, can be onshore, can be offshore. Okay, uh, next. So the main question I pose here is which is the safest transportation method of all? Uh, pipeline, as you have an idea now, is actually a transportation to actually move my uh, intended uh, commodities which may be uh, upper oil, gas or condensate or whatever that I need to transport from 
uh, point A to point B. Sama. That goes the same with the truck, it transports, the railway, it transports, and the tanker, it transports. All of these are transportation methods. So, but among all, which is the safest? Okay, when we talk about safe, kita kena understand kalau macam truck tu, uh, there's a risk of accidents at highway. And we, we all know that the number of accidents that we see uh, uh, with regards to road punya safety, we see every year is thousands. Uh, bukan sikit eh, very, a lot. So, kalau kita compare all of this, relatively, the pipeline transportation method is the safest. Next. So, in oil and gas industry, pipeline is the safest and most efficient means of transportation to transport hydrocarbon or water from one point to another. Uh, uh, it's not just, uh, apa? okay, uh, uh, a little understanding is that uh, we transport uh, we transport, uh, kalau dekat offshore, uh, pipeline may transport from one plant, plant to another plant or from one plant to another uh, FSO, our floating uh, tanker, uh, upper floating unit and then also maybe to all the way to onshore. Kat onshore, it goes to the processing plants and then from the processing plants, it may go to other distribution centres. Uh, uh, in some countries, it goes the gas punya, uh, apa, Gas put, uh, the gas that they have, they actually distribute it right to the houses. Uh, so it depends uh, on where the, they want to transport it to. Okay. Uh, the thing is, bila kita pergi offshore, at offshore, when we go uh, out in the sea, it seems very uh, calm, uh, especially bila kita dekat surface of the sea, kan? Uh, tak, tak nampak apa sangat. But actually, uh, under the sea, we can see there's a whole uh, different stories to it. Ah, nampak in the picture itself kita nampak there's a very busy uh, apa transportation punya uh, apa system dekat under the subsea. So whatever you see uh, on the top does it uh, may actually means uh, there's something more busier at the bottom. Ah, so kita nampak. So this is just an example of how uh uh. Most of our pipelines, when we install, uh, upper this, uh, the 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 system that we have at Subsea, we can see there are some flow lines. We have injection lines. We have the risers, hybrid risers, the catenary risers, as presented by Mr. Aima and Mr. Helmi just now, and then we have the TTR top tension risers as well, presented by them, and then we have the transport line, export lines, the 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 upper terminals and also the uh, manifolds at the subsea. So there are a lot of uh, things happening at the subsea that we do not see. Okay, next. All right, so talking about pipeline, uh, this is just uh, to summarize a bit of what are the available pipeline technologies that we have in the uh, market at the moment. All right, first of all, very common, we have the rigid pipeline. Uh, this is very common. It consists of metal uh, which mechanically pressed together and fused to form a tubular and can be seamless or welded type. Uh, this material can be carbon steel or corrosion resistant alloy, uh, CRA. It can size up to 80 inch uh, and depending on the manufacturing type. So the installation method is usually as lay, jelly, relay or towing. Uh, it is worldwide use. There's no water depth limitation cheaper for longer application and inspectable and pickable. Uh, pickable. To pick a, a pipeline means to inspect the pipeline by uh, having a gauge uh, or, or equipment uh, running in the pipeline. Uh, so, kita boleh inject the pick, masuk dalam pipeline and inspect the whole length of the pipeline. So, it is pickable. This meeting is being recorded. Okay, next uh, we have uh, the maximum water depth installed. The recording has stopped. The maximum water depth installed for the rigid pipeline that we have is currently 2,400 meters. Uh, this is the Shell Perdido project. Okay, and then we have on the very uh, most right hand corner, the very most right hand corner is the bonded flexible type. So this is also a type of flexible pipeline, but this is bonded. We also call it the non-metallic pipeline. There's no metal uh, in the construction of the pipeline itself. Uh, it's either the reinforced thermoplastic or thermocomposite pipeline. 
So this consists of three main layers. It's either thermoplastic liner and outer air reinforcement layer. We have a size of 4 to 10 inch uh, ID. Uh, the towing and relay, uh, faster lay rate, uh, corrosion free. This is corrosion free. When we talk about corrosion, it, all, it, you, it will attack metals. But since this pipeline doesn't have any metals, this is corrosion free. In our industry, uh, corrosion is a big headache for the pipeline engineers. So, but uh, for this one, the maximum water depth we have installed before is 80 meters. In 2000, uh, 2017, we installed one uh, non-metallic pipelines in Sarawak, uh, so, uh, in West Lutong. Okay, in the middle, we have the unbonded flexible pipe. This is like a marriage of the uh, metallic and the non-metallic pipe. Uh, the, uh, it, com it composed of both uh, metal and non-metallic uh, in the construction of the pipeline itself. So it consists of several layers. Uh, burn lapis-lapis, kalau kita tengok situ, dia punya cross-sectional area, uh, cross-sectional punya uh, design tu memang dia berlayer-layer. And these several layers can be metallic wires, tapes and extruded polymers which carries different roles of functions. Sorry, the size, uh, it size up to 16 inch. Uh, the method of installation is relay. Uh, it has a faster lay rate. And, uh, the deepest that we have installed before is 2,300 meter in Erasmus Norte project. Okay. okay, next. So this is a pipeline uh, system. Uh, this is the pipeline system that we designed for PF 429. Uh, the ones that we installed in 2021. 20, uh, then kita install last year. Uh, this is just a design. The thing with pipeline uh, construction ni, design dia ni, it can be, uh, it's not specific to only one. Uh, it can be customized. So this one that we have here is the one that represents PL 429 that we had before. So we have the car carcass layer which provide the collapse resistance of the external pressure. This carcass is the one that takes the shape of the pipeline. Ah, and it prevents the pipeline from collapse. All right. And then we have the internal pressure shelf which contain the fluid within the pipe board and provide resistance against internal loads. We have pressure armor which support pressure shelf against internal pressure, provide additional radial capacity against radial compressive loads, tensile armor, which provide resistance against axial loads, and these armors also provide uh, partial resistance against internal pressure. Okay, auxiliary layer, prevent wires from metal to metal contact and minimize abrasion between armor layer. Okay, anti-buckling layer, resist radial buckling of tensile armor wires and outer shaft, uh, the yellow one is the outer shaft, okay, protect the pipe against penetration of sea water and other external environments, corrosion, abrasion and mechanical damage. Okay, so as you can see, each layer, they, they have a specific function and roles. Okay, next. Okay, this is a pipeline alignment uh, that we had for P, uh, F, uh, P, flexible pipeline PF429. So I'm just going to uh, go through in general. Okay, for pipeline, uh, we, it is impossible to have just pipeline installed without its ancillaries. Uh, usually, and uh, to make up a system, there are more than actually one component. So for pipeline flexible pipeline system, these are the common uh, ancillaries that comes uh, together with it. Okay, we can see uh, there's a end fitting. The end fitting on the top right hand corner is uh, is actually the end fitting that connects the flexible pipelines to the top side because top side is not flexible. It's not. There's no. Uh, usually the top side is made of uh, uh, stainless steel or carbon steel. Uh, so to connect the rigid pipe with the flexible pipe, uh, we need the end fitting. And then the eye tube. Actually, on uh, kalau kita tengok on the uh, picture, on the picture this one, uh, the whole um, apa namanya uh, vertical section actually uh, up until the the end fitting, up until the end fitting is actually the whole eye tube lah. 
because the purpose of the eye tube is actually to fix the riser uh, to the platform. Uh, because flexible pipeline kan boleh gerak. So for with the eye tube, it makes the uh, the the flexible uh, become static. Just to inform, in general, uh, flexible pipeline can go uh, with dynamic uh, a dynamic punya application or the static application. For PF429, we went for static application. <coughs> All right. So we have iTube. For PF429, we have iTube. Uh, it can also be JTube. It depends on the design. But for 429, we have iTube. We also have the anode. Anode is to protect from external uh, corrosion. Uh, of the eye tube itself because eye tube is usually uh, just a carbon steel so it needs protection okay and then we have the bell mouth okay this one later i show a clearer picture of the bell mouth we have the band restrictor uh, this is to prevent the band from uh, upper buckling lah, especially if it goes lower than its uh, minimum bending radius uh, Okay, and then we have the eye tube seal uh, to seal off the eye tube at the end uh, at the mouth too so that there's no water ingress masuk kan. There will be corrosion later on. Uh, so this eye tube, this is the eye tube seal. All right, next. Okay, this is the uh, a closer representation of what is happening at the bottom, at the bend of the uh, platform too kan. So you can see this is the band restrictor. Uh, the band restrictor, okay, just to give a, 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 a little hint lah. Sebenarnya we will have an, a, a video at the end of our presentation. There's a video to show you clearer. Uh, you can see from the video later how a band restrictor looks like, how the eye tube looks like, how the flexible pilot even looks like and imagine how big it is. Uh, sebab kalau kita tengok dalam ni nampak macam uh, host dekat rumah kan. Uh, tapi bila you tengok dekat side is actually very huge. Uh, okay. So the band restrictor yang kita tengok is actually consists of several uh, modules kita nampak. To, to make up uh, one band restrictor, there's a several modules kat situ. So nanti uh, during installation, they will install one by one lah. One by one. one, one, one uh. So nanti uh, you will see in the video later. We also have the bell mouth here. It's, it looks like a, a, a bell. That's why it calls a bell mouth. Okay, bell mouth tu sebenarnya to assist uh, the, the the riser to go into the eye tube. Nah. Uh, so this is the bell mouth. Okay, next. All right. This is the dynamic uh, flexible risers application. Uh, usually, this is suitable for deep water and ultra deep water environments. I'm not going to touch uh, so much about this because it has this topic has been touched by Mr. Aima and also uh, Helmi just now. So we can see there are several configuration. We have the free hanging catenary, steep S, lazy S, steep wave, and lazy wave. Kalau kita tengok at the picture here that I provided in the slide, you can see that is the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is the steep wave configuration. That's how it looks like. Okay, yang the yellow uh, at the upper, bot up, yang terjongkit ke atas tu, uh -huh, it is actually a buoy that they install on the on the pipeline itself. Okay, so this that is the steep wave lah. All right. Next. Okay. Uh, just a brief of the construction of flexible pipeline. Okay, next. When when we buy something, that something always come with a manual, because uh, especially uh, the uh, macam contoh if we buy something from IKEA, kita nak pasang macam mana semua, it will comes with a manual. Then you have a better understanding of how to construct that thing. Same, when we construct a pipeline or any asset that we have in uh, in our in our industry that we always have a codes and standards as a guideline okay for patronas uh, we have the pts which is the patronas technical standard uh, it is a standardized technical practice for design engineering operations and maintenance to ensure the technical integrity and safety of plant assets in patronas group these guidelines actually helps us engineers to actually design the pipeline to make sure that we can uh, not just design design to operate it safely okay 
so we can see that for our PTS, we refer to PTS 11.30.10, the unbonded flexible pipeline of offshore pipelines and rises. The PTS that I mentioned just now is actually uh, amendments or supplements to the international standards API 17B and API 17J, the recommended practice for flexible pipeline and the specification for unbonded flexible pipeline. Okay, next. Right, so this is the key design considerations. Uh, first of all, when we design our pipeline, we need to understand what is the failure modes. Okay, when we receive the data, uh, pipeline compo, when we receive the environmental data, and then we receive uh, all the data that we need, then we need to figure out what is the failure modes that this pipeline is going to see. So these are the uh, common types of failures that we can see in a uh, flexible pipeline. For the carcass, we can have corrosion, erosion. The internal pressure shelf is actually exposed to creep, thermal chemical degradation and cracking. And pressure armor we, is exposed to corrosion. Disorganization or locking of armor wires. Back up uh, pressure armor, it's social corrosion, disorganization or locking of armor wires. All the anti-waste layers is exposed to wear. The inner tensile layers, also corrosion, disorganization, or locking of armor wires. Uh, and then we have the anti-collapse shaft is exposed to thermal degradation. Uh, same with thermal insulation, also thermal degradation. And the end pitting and armor carcass or shaft interface also exposed to corrosion. All right, next. So... When we understand what is the failure mechanism, how it will fail, then we can come up with the design solution. Okay, uh, this I will not go through into detail. However, let me just give an example. For example, if we identify that uh, the failure mode is collapsed and we understand the failure mechanism where the collapse can happen on the carcass and or pressure armor due to excessive tension or external pressure and installation loads. It can collapse also can happen due to internal pressure shelves in smooth bore pipe. Collapse also can happen to carcass due to pressure buildup in multi-layer shelves and rapid decompression and collapse of pipe due to carcass pull out from end fitting and collapse due to carcass fitting. So kita nampak there are several failure mechanism. Then we can come up with the design solution. For example, increase the thickness of carcass strip, pressure armor or internal pressure shafts. Okay, uh, modify configuration of installation design to reduce the load. Add intermediate anti-collapse shaft. Increase area of uh, moment of inertia of carcass or pressure armor. Prevent pressure buildup and rapid decom. Design and fit things to assure support of pressure shelf and assure correct manufacturing of carcass to avoid fatigue loading. So this is just one example that I highlight. However, when we design a pipeline, we need to understand that uh, we do not want to over-design it as well. Uh, for example, the cutter increased thickness. How thick, how much thickness that is required? that I need to calculate. I need to conduct an analysis uh, for the uh, wall thickness of the pipeline. If I go, if the analysis says actually uh, all that you need is 10 mm thickness, but I decide, oh, it's okay, I want to install, uh, I want to design up until 15 mm. Why? Uh, for my own uh, satisfaction, for my own uh, rasa lagi selamat. All that is actually adding uh, money. Ah, makin tebal makin mahal lah. Ah, so that's why when design, uh, we if we follow the codes, uh, we have uh, actually included sufficient safety factors for the design. Ah, uh, so over designing is actually uh, not wise. Ah, uh, it will only cost you extra money, which is not good for the business as well lah. Alright, so we have uh, the different failure modes and different failure mechanism identified for the uh, for the appropriate design solution. Uh, as I mentioned just now, for flexible pipeline, uh, we can have many different uh, designs. Uh, there's not one design that can uh, be used for. Uh, all the pipelines, we can design it, customize it uh, to uh, to actually suit the design solution that we need. Okay, next. Okay, this is also others uh, failure modes. 
um, overbending, torsional failures, fatigue failures, erosion and cor corrosion, and also all the design solutions. Okay, uh, for erosion, we can see we need to increase MBR. So for this, perhaps we need uh, additional studies uh, as well to study the erosion. Uh. Okay, let's see. So next, uh, these are the analysis technique for flexible pipeline. For example, we have the local analysis, uh, which is actually to relate the global loadings to, uh, to the stress and strains in the pipeline. So it will see how the pipeline stress and strains react to the global loadings. Results may be validated by prototype testing. Uh, we have the analysis of pipe wall environment, also very important. Uh, determination of the gas release requirements and metallic material failure modes because sometimes uh, the hydrocarbon uh, may permit uh, the seep through uh, the the uh, carcass the materials uh, go into between the layers of the flexible pipeline so in this case usually we will also install an analyst uh, in between the layers of the pipeline to actually uh, Upper evacuate uh, the permeated gas. This uh, these studies also determine the permeation rate. Uh, all right, the global analysis evaluate global load effects on the pipe during all stages, installations, operations, and retrieval. The static configuration and extreme response of displacement, curvature, force, and moment from environmental effects should be evaluated in the global analysis. So part of the global analysis also consists of the thermal analysis on bottom stability, upheaval buckling, and also uh, in place tie in analysis. Next is the model analysis, which calculate of the calculation of the natural frequency of the riser system for analysis of the global VIV response due to current as a basis to, uh, for selecting the wave periods for strength, interference, fatigue installation analysis when considered with motion, velocity, accelerations, RAOs at the riser hangoff. Uh, we have service life analysis, also very much important. So this analysis uh, analyze the fatigue and wear uh, as part of the analysis. Okay, component analysis, uh, as I mentioned just now, for the whole pipeline system, there are many other components that relates to it, that makes up the whole system. It's not just the flexible pipeline itself. So the component analysis actually evaluates each component required for the flexible pipeline system, and the local analysis of each component may be uh, required. Okay, next see. Okay, those analysis that I've uh, presented just now was part of the analysis that was conducted by the design team. However, one thing that we do not touch is the installation analysis. This uh, is under uh, the concern of the installation engineers. Therefore, I welcome my colleague, Mr. Husari, to present on the installation analysis and so on after this. Thank you. Ye yeah, unmuted. You are muted, Yi. Yi, you are muted. Okay, uh, clear, eh? Okay, dengar apa? Okay, uh, I share the screen. Okay, kita repeat balik tadi. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much, Hawa. Uh, my click very energetic, energetic begitu semangat. Uh, dekat office kita call her Iron Lady. Tengok macam mana dia present online pun very very energetic eh. First of all on behalf of team, uh, we really say thank you very much to UTHM management, uh, lecturers and student, adik-adik kita semua. Give opportunity and a chance to our Petronas click to sharing and present uh, our experience and project. And we most welcome semua adik-adik after grad boleh join Petronas. Okay, uh, first uh, just now uh, my colleague Hawa talk about the design, about how to select the pipe. Now after uh, we complete engineering, we dah design and then we dah uh, we complete buy, we procure the flexible part line. Part line. Now we go to the stage how to install the flexible part line as per design and safely at offshore. Okay, before we install, we need 
to do some engineering analysis and modeling to ensure that before we go to offshore, we simulate and modeling everything based using our software to ensure we can install it, the flexible part line safely and we can use as per our engineering. So uh, in our engineering analysis for the TNI, we will use the software called Orca Flat. This software is a finite element program developed by Orsina. So anyone here, uh, either lecturer or student, uh, familiar with the Orca Flat, this one is a very good software uh, for modeling and simulation uh, for the offshore application. So maybe student, if you can spend your time and study more about Orca Flat, this one is very good software and can be advantage when you go for the interview for any engineering office. Lah. Okay, uh, Orca Flat is a marine dynamic program developed for static and dynamic analysis of flexible part line and cable system in a marine environment. When we want to install the part line regardless uh, rigid or flexi, we use the Orca Flat for modeling and simulation uh, for the offshore application. The software is a 3D, non-linear time domain and finite element program. I believe uh, since during I student also, we, we learn and study about the finite element, right? And then uh, why we use this software? This software can analyze uh, our part line load, uh, our part line and equipment tension, our minimum bending radius, compression, and etc. Okay, normally for the engineering and analysis, our main uh, document or report that we will produce is flexible part line installation analysis. Uh, we will run for the I-tube installation analysis. We also run for the flexible part line transportation analysis and sea fastening design. This one, uh, we will run the Orca flat to ensure we transport the flexible part line, for example, uh, from onshore Johor port to Sarawak offshore. And the last one, I-tube transportation analysis and sea fastening design report. Here, uh, I share some uh, photos and snapshot based on our real project. Here in Oka Flat, we will run based on step involved in our engineering analysis. We have a uh, step one, two, three, four, and many steps. This one is a summary. For example, during step one, we start to pull in uh, the end fitting uh, part line to the I-tube. And then step two, we have a flexible touchdown seabed after our flexible uh, part line vessel move. So our flexible part line will touch the seabed, what's happened there. And then the step three, uh, during the vessel move away, during the laying process, we will uh, see the flexible part line. We will lay uh, from point A to point B and then the point four. Uh, after we lay away and then what's happened. This one, we need to ensure before we go to offshore, we have uh, assurance and confident that we install in safe and our flexible part line didn't buckle. We can uh, operate the part line safely without any damage and meet our order requirement. So we can see here, we will, uh, this Oka flat uh, can show to us about the vessel information, uh, about the distance, about the layback, and then about the part line, six inch part line, uh, the distance from the bell mouth, how long uh, the flexible part line already laid, about the tension, about the load. So this one, actually we do some simulation and modeling using the Orca flat. Okay. Okay, next, uh, after we do the engineering analysis during our detailed engineering design for TNI, after we have all the info and then we confirm and ensure that our method is safe, so we will develop our installation procedure. Okay, this procedure actually, why we develop the installation procedure? To ensure our scope, transportation and installation will be executed safely and meet autobus. In Petronas, is very famous, our target or let's say like KPI for all project, we need to ensure our project uh, as on time as our plan per schedule, on our budget, how much we spend as per our uh, money that we have, and then meet our own scope, meaning uh, we can complete all the scope that uh, we listed for the project. So below, uh, I list out the main procedure 
that we develop to ensure our flexible part line, we can uh, install it safely and meet all the international standard API and also Petronas standard, uh, Petronas uh, technical standard PTS. The main document uh, for the procedure, first, we need to develop for iTube loadout procedure, flexible part line loadout procedure. Loadout meaning uh, from the onshore and then we transfer to our vessel. Then we develop the clamp and iTube installation, flexible part line installation procedure. After that, we also develop uh, pre-commissioning and analysis. After we complete install everything, we need to do some testing to ensure we safely install the part line. So we do the pre-commissioning testing like a leak test, analysis test, cleaning, dewatering, drying. I will explain and uh, share detail further. In the procedure also, we need to develop the weather monitoring and emergency pull-out procedure. Uh, this one because we work in offshore, so uh, we will mobilize our installation vessel. Our works uh, at offshore really, really depending on the weather. Uh, in Malaysia, normally uh, starting from November until February, we classify as a monsoon season, meaning the weather, hiccup weather with the strong uh, swell, strong wind. Uh, so that's why we need to have a weather monitoring and also emergency pull-out procedure to cater the weather condition. Uh, next, we have a diving procedure and diving plan. Also, we have a ROV procedure and plan. This diving and ROV is our main uh, equipment and team uh, to do the installation because our installation involved underwater, involved in the sea. So how to work in the sea by using the diver and also ROV. Okay, uh, next I will share detail about the installation execution uh, step and flow. Uh, hopefully uh, your guy can have uh, some uh, idea and then uh, at the end of the session, we will share the video so you have a better understanding what we do and what uh, my clip starting from the first presenter until Howard just now, what we're talking about. Okay. Uh, for better understanding, we will share the our real project uh, complete uh, last year, offshore execution and also commissioning. This one is a part line 429, part line replacement project. 429 meaning the numbering uh, for the part line, just a label. This one uh, at a Sarawak offshore, uh, at a Boko field. Boko field, if we take the fast crew boat, uh, we take the boat from the Miri to Boko around three to four hours uh, sailing by crew boat. Uh, so yang adik-adik ataupun yang berminat dengan offshore, jika suka naik boat, willing to go offshore and then boleh join lah team offshore ni. Uh, Okay, this uh, installation 429, we installed one kilometer for this 12 inch uh, OD uh, diameter flexible part line from Boko drilling platform Charlie platform to Boko uh, Alpha platform at Boko Offshore Office Sarawak as a replacement for the existing rigid part line. Our previous existing rigid part line uh, unfit. Uh, to carry the product, so we need to do the replacement. So we change uh, from rigid part line to the flexible part line with the new technology. Uh, this installation inclusive of all the ancillaries, uh, I tube and other ancillaries. Uh, from the field layout here. Uh, today, okay. Uh, from the Boko field here, we can see uh, from one platform to the other platform. Here is a Boko Charlie platform to the Boko Alpha. So in the red spot below, we can see I move my circle cursor. This is the our part line road uh, for the flexible part line. So we will move our vessel uh, from point A to point B to ensure we lay the flexible part line as per our engineering design. Okay, this one is a front view for our installation layout from the platform A to the platform B with the one uh, end fitting, first end fitting to the other end fitting. Okay. When we talk about the transportation and installation, 
what is the marine vessel involved meaning boat apa yang terlibat kapal apa yang terlibat untuk uh, to complete the transportation and installation okay uh, before that uh, i just uh, insert nak summarize actually transportation meaning uh, from the onshore after we gather all our material equipment flexible part like at onshore in our project we gather everything in johor port then we transport it we transportation transport it to the offshore Ah, uh, that's why we call that one is a scope under transportation and then when we arrive at offshore we do all the method uh, procedure step based on our installation procedure just now to complete installation of the flexible part line okay here i listed uh, our three main vessel involved for the installation number one is a dynamic positioning tool main installation vessel mv pride for i tube and part line installation concrete mattress and precom you can see here the photo uh, this vessel uh, is huge uh, they can accommodate uh, 120 packs uh, people inside their accommodation also we have a heli deck this one is uh, for the helicopter landing heli deck and then we have a main crane here with a capacity around 200 uh, metric ton to lift our project material okay next we have a supply vessel uh, ceiling 178 our main function for the supply vessel is to transport all project material the main criteria for the supply vessel to have a big deck space this one consider around 500 to 700 uh, meter cube deck space this one we will load in all the balance uh, concrete mattress clamp everything so for this project material we will load uh, to the our main installation vessel that space here and also for the supply vessel and the last one we have a fast crew boat fast crew boat ni like uh, normally mudah faham macam ferry lah macam we go to langkawi pulau pangko so for our spec we use we call uh, fcb fast crew boat to transport crew from onshore to offshore and also at field this one like i mentioned just now uh, if we go to boko from the miri terminal to boko field around three to four hours and then this fast crew boat also uh, will transport our crew from our main installation vessel our main accommodation at offshore to the platform by using the fast crew boat normally our fast crew boat speed around 20 knots when we convert to uh, kilometer per hour around uh, almost 40 or 30, uh, 30 to 40 kilometer per hour okay this is our plan schedule uh, for flexible part line installation uh, for one project typically this is our typical installation duration and step uh, for our installation uh, first we will perform the rig up and preparation at port for our project, we do all the rig up, mobilization uh, and preparation, all the welding, preparation, lifting at Johor Port. So that one uh, roughly takes around four days to mobilize everything after we buy the flexible part line, we buy the concrete mattress, all the ancillaries, we transfer to Johor Port and then from the Johor Port, we required four days to lift everything to secure, to be on board our supply vessel and also main installation vessel just now okay after we complete everything we have clear uh, checklist and then everything uh, on board we never miss anything so we have a green light to sailing to offshore transportation to field uh, for the Sarawak from Johor to Sarawak normally takes three to four days depending on the speed and uh, the location after we arrive at field, first we will install the clamp and I tube installation uh, to numbers at platform, meaning uh, for each platform, platform A, Charlie, and platform uh, B, uh, Alpha just now. So we takes around four days uh, for each I tube. After complete install I tube, we will do the uh, first pull in a uh, flexible part line. We have a uh, first end fitting. I will show uh, photo just uh, after this around uh, half to one day to pull into the I tube and then we will do the flexible part line lay move our vessel uh, estimate lay rate for the flexible part line we can uh, get until three kilometer to four kilometer 
per day. We estimate normally we estimate one to three kilometer depending on how long uh, we install the flexible part line. Our lay rate uh, for the flexible part line is very fast. We can achieve up to five meter per minute uh, our installation rate. And then after we complete lay one kilometer, we will install the second pull in flexible part line to the other platform end. This one take around half to one day. After complete install the part line just now, so we will install the concrete mattress installation for the on bottom stability and also for the drop object protection. This one uh, typically we can install from 15 to 20 numbers per day for the installation. This one uh, when I mentioned here around three days, so more or less our uh, concrete mattress 50 to 60 numbers for the one kilometer. After that, we will proceed the pre-commissioning. Pre-commissioning is a process uh, to verify the part line to ensure that we install the part line in safe and meet all the requirement as per uh, international standard, API and also PTS. So we will do the cleaning, we will do the leak test, and then we will proceed with the watering, drying, nitrogen purging, packing up to depend on the our final product. If we use our product is gas, so our precom requirement is different from the water and also fuel. It depends on the our product to be flow in the flexible part line. After complete everything, we go to the final stage before we demop or go back to onshore. We will do the post lay survey and SB survey to take our exact location, what we lay just now, our flexible part line. So we will have survey equipment by using ROV to take fits each position to fly through along the part line road. We plot on our map and then we will update to uh, PHN, Pusat Hydrographic Negara, for them to chart in their uh, overall uh, offshore field layout. Okay, in overall, all the process starting from the preparation until we complete everything up to as weight survey, normally take less than a month, around 27 to 30 days. Okay, now uh, we will share the photo and video for your better understanding and clear picture lah, what we are talking about just now. Okay, uh, at the top, uh, we at regard at preparation, this one at uh, Johor port. Our vessel uh, will have a bedding take a bedding uh, slot mana parking dekat Johor Port tu empat hari and then we will leave all the preparation, all the equipment. This one is a chute like a tensioner to lay the flexible part line and then we will do the many welding works for the installation aids. This one uh, is a tensioner to hold the part line. This one semua ni preparation uh, we make it 24 hours within four days to ensure all the material and then installation A equipment ready on board. Okay, at the right corner, this one is our flexible part line. For our project, we have uh, three numbers, flexible part line. This one uh, we procured uh, from the China. So uh, the supplier from the China, NOAD, they transport our flexible part line uh, to Johor port and then from the Johor port, we transfer to our main installation vessel just now. So after we leave uh, to be on board MV Pride just now, we will uh, install the flexible uh, part line system, real and uh, real drive system uh, on board. You can see here we have uh, the RDS real drive system. Uh, this one RDS, the function is to rotate or move the rig. So for movement of the rail, uh, our RDS will function to move the rail and then our bus uh, will, will, will move uh, front and what to move the, to, uh, to, uh, to lay the flexible part line. Okay, uh, here is our vessel that layout that we perform during the regard work. You can see here, we will lift the concrete mattress. We have the tracking system and flexible part line system, RDS just now. We have a three number of read. And then just now I share the chute, like a tensioner, like a stinger. The one who uh, 
flexible part line will move for, to the tensioner and then to the chute. Okay, this is the final product before we sell. So after complete regard for this, this is the final photo. You can see here, we have everything on our vessel now. Three reel with a reel drive system. And then we have a chute here, we have a ROV. And then here, small is a diving system. When we arrive at offshore, we will conduct a meeting with a operation team. Here's there we call OIM, Offshore Installation Manager, the one who leads all the operation at platform. So we will have a discussion to brief about our works and then uh, to request the permit to work PTW before we start. During the meeting, uh, we will list down all the step and then all the risk and mitigation that we have to ensure our execution will be performed safely. So we can see here, we will leave our claim to the water and then will be assisted by the diver. So we can see here, our works in the water will be performed uh, by the diver and also by the ROV. On top, on board of the vessel, will be assisted by using the vessel crane. This is the vessel crane uh, to lift the eye tube. Uh, this is our project eye tube. This one is a small photo actually, the, the length of eye tube uh, for the Boko, uh, this one, the total length uh, around 20 for each uh, 20 to 30 meter. For each section, we have uh, two section to cover around uh, 60 meter length based on the water depth. This is the final product for the eye tube after we complete install uh, underwater clamp and also uh, eye tube. Next, after we complete install the eye tube, we start the flexible part line lay. DP2, uh, our main installation vessel will move and follow proposed pipeline road to lay the flexible part line. ROV will monitor the flexible part line during the lay process. We can see here uh, from our flexible part line in the drum, in the reel. So our crane will assist to lift the first end. This one, uh, the second photo, we will hook the crane block to the first end of the flexible part line. And then we will lift, we will pass to the uh, platform team, assist by the rigging team at the platform to hold and then uh, to in, uh, to pull in inside the eye tube. And then vessel will move away uh, and selling based on our proposed pipeline road that I show uh, before this. Uh, this is the uh, step that we uh, have. We will leave the uh, flexible part line. Okay, next after complete the installation, flexible part line, we will install the concrete mattress. The concrete mattress will be lift by using the crane uh, vessel and then uh, in the water will be assist by the ROV. So photo here is taken by the ROV. ROV is a remote operated vehicle like a robot in the water. We have a monitor, camera and then we have a manipulator like a tangan, lah, tangan dua, tiga tangan, ROV towards inside the uh, water, under the water, controlled by our ROV team, ROV pilot and technician. On board this one, macam kita main kereta control lah, like we uh, fly a drone, we control from the control panel. Uh, this one ROV, same uh, concept, like we fly drone or we play a remote car kereta, uh, kereta control. Eh? Okay, after complete uh, concrete mattress, so to ensure that we install safely, and no buckle, no damage to the flexible part line. So we will run uh, the integrity or assurance checking by using the pre-commissioning. So we will conduct the part line lead test, analysis lead test, dewatering to remove all the oil inside the flexible part line. We'll conduct the drying, nitrogen packing, depends on the part line product that we will flow after this. And then based on photo, we will use the pick, we will insert the pick into the part line launcher to move uh, and clean the flexible part line. And then this one, uh, we will perform the leak test 24 hours and follow code and standard uh, depend on our product and operation requirement. 
this one we have approved based on the lead test uh, we have approved based on the chart uh, chart and then we will need to submit to the authority before we flow our product this one is a gauge to monitor our lead test and uh, pre communication process okay uh, before i end uh, my presentation uh, for better understanding for everyone uh, we prepare and share a video for the flexible pipeline installation for our project uh, from uh, Sarawak project that we conducted uh, last year e, so i hope um, e, before e, that we have some questions from the floor uh, do we answer this after the the video uh, better we, we show the video first eh? and then we go right. to q and a is it okay yeah okay so i will show the video for the better understanding uh, some disclaimer to the video this video is uh, produced by our main contractor uh, Tecom uh, during that time for their capability and corporate video so in the video we have some their prom promote about their com uh, company and so on that's one because this video is uh, their uh, property uh, for the project and then uh, we glad to share with you all for our learning purpose okay i will share the video eh The Bocor oil field, operated by Petronas, was discovered in the 1970s. In order to safeguard the product delivery from one of its drilling platform, an aging in-field linear pipeline will be replaced by a flexible PL429 pipeline. In Johor Port, Malaysia, all personnel who have completed their COVID-19 precaution quarantine have arrived to board a diving support vessel, Southern Star. The COVID-19 global pandemic has posed uh, significant unforeseen challenges to the uh, implementation of the project since the award back in March 2020. However, the resilience that we built into the TACOM project team has enable us to navigate the uh, uncertainty with confidence and rigor. All hands on deck, the first project team begin a three days sailing from Johor port to Bokor oilfield. So, untuk underwater activity consists of old riser remover and then we need to install the protector which is the eye tube into the platform. The offshore campaign aboard the Southern Star vessel begin with the removal of two risers at BOPA and one riser at BODPC. The riser is removed by a cold cut technique using a diamond wire cutter or DWC. The operation requires precise coordination between engineers, riggers and ROV operators. The removal of the decommissioned rises and rigid pipelines intensively involves subsea activities. Other than DWC and ROV, divers are required with the retrieval of the detached pipelines and the preparation works prior to the installation of the new clamps and I tube. Meanwhile, in Johor port, three reels of the flexible pipeline have arrived. This morning, our Flexible flow line has been transported safely from Shanghai port to Johor port. So they are offloading this uh, flexible flow line from the vessel AAL Dampier to the storage yard. The rail will be here estimated for about one month. Then it will be transported on board to our MCV, MV Pride, then to the Boko platform and the Mana platform. The engineering design and fabrication of the I-tubes and clamps are carried out by a competent Turcom team at their renowned fabrication workshops in Labu 1 and Klang. High-quality steels are cut and welded together to millimeter precision. 
A few months later, the fabrication of the eye tubes and clamps are completed as per engineering design, and ready to be transported offshore. Back in the Bocor oil field, the crew proceed with the installation of the eye tube and its fittings at BOPA and BODPC. After a few weeks at sea, the project team aboard the Southern Star vessel has successfully completed their mission. The PL429 and PL430 pipeline replacement project is resumed by the second project team. Today we are mobilizing our flexible floor line including the rotary drive system, uh, chute and also the deflector, the air drive system which will be used during the installation of remaining ice tube at Tamana Field and we also loading the 66 numbers of concrete mattress for stabilization and also crossing. Approximately 1,400 metric tons of cargoes are being loaded on the MV Pride main deck which requires more than 200 times crane lifting. Once all the cargoes are secured on MV Pride main deck, the construction vessel left Johor port and make its way to Tamana oilfield. With fully loaded cargo, MV Pride sail for three days to reach the location. In Tamana Oilfield, the well-experienced team performs a similar procedure of installing the eye tube and its fixtures is in Bokor Oilfield. Dua buah eye tube telah dipasang di Bravo dan Whisky melibatkan air diver dalam uh, kedalaman 10 meter dan maksimum 30 meter lah. A few days later, the eye tubes, load bearing clamps, and subsea clamps have been successfully installed and the team is ready to lay the flexible pipeline. The 6 inch flow line with a total length of 3,410 meters will be laid from Tamana Gas Drilling Platform TEDPB to Satellite Platform TEJTW. There are a few key moments for this project, which is that the flow line are designed for high stem productions and we even took the initiative to install a stem monitoring system which is the first in Malaysia and hopefully this all will add value to the asset operation in the future. All system checked, MV Pride gently approached TEDPB to begin the pipeline laying operation. Okay, dekat Wokit Platform itu, kita akan install kita punya uh, centralizer. Selepas sampai satu distance, kita kena install uh, eye tube seal. And then selepas IT seal di, diikuti dengan uh, pen restrictor. Once all the ancillaries have been installed, the first end of the flexible pipeline is secured to the Tamana Bravo platform. Slowly, MV Pride head towards the Tamana Whiskey platform at an average speed of 1.5 knots, while the team on the main deck lay the flexible pipeline. The procedure is closely monitored by the ROV and survey team to confirm the flexible pipeline is lay on the predetermined route. Halfway to the Tamana Whiskey platform, the team commences a midpoint tie-in procedure to join the end fittings of flexible pipelines, from real A to real B. Once both flexible pipelines are attached, the laying process continues. Two days later, the team secured the last end of the flexible pipeline to the Tamana Whiskey platform. In order to make sure the flexible pipeline retains its position throughout the service lifetime, 74 units of the concrete mattress are placed on top of the flexible pipeline along the route. With the successful operation in Tamana oilfield, the dedicated team from Turcomp head toward Bokor oilfield to continue with the flexible pipeline installation. Uh, yeah, Bryce, just not 
the final reel for this project, hold a 900 meter long flexible pipeline that is 12 inch in diameter. It will link BODPC to BOPA platform. Once the preparation works are ready and the construction vessel in place, the team begins the procedures of laying the flexible pipeline which is similar to the one they have completed in the Tamana oil field. A few days later, the team has successfully completed the installation of a flexible pipeline in Bokor oil field. The pre-commissioning team data has shown that the flexible pipeline has achieved the installation standard. We have completed the Tamana and Boko flexible installation project with all the cooperation, with all the dedicated team, with all the support from the office, from the management, from the client, we can deliver the project. So you just uh, see that the com will become another main player for TNI in the future. The successful transport and installation of PL429 and PL430 pipeline replacement project has proven Turcomp as a trustworthy contractor capable of delivering a successful project with the highest industry standards safely. As for Petronas, the new pipeline installed will ensure the safe delivery of oil and gas product within its platforms for many years to come. Okay, uh, that's all our presentation and video sharing uh, with with the HM team. Okay, uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, so basically, we have a few questions in our chat box. So we started with the Q and A session. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so the first question: uh, Did underwater pipeline experience hammering? And how is a bad off is that happen, and how to prevent it when it's happen in the underwater pipeline? All right. Uh, to answer this, uh, underwater pipelines can ha uh, experience ha hammering. Uh, this is especially uh due to the uh flow pattern. Uh, if we have um a lot of slugging at the bend section, uh and uh. Due to the velocity, kita ada velocity, but at the same time we have uh, a sl uh, upper slugging at the bend section. Then it may uh, the 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 movement of it may cause a hammering at the bend. So usually to prevent this, uh, first of all we need to run the the our uh, flow ass uh, assurance study. Part of it is also the hydraulic study lah. Uh, and then uh, from there we will actually identify if there is any potential uh, slugging. Or, or, or hammering to occur at the band. Uh, to prevent that, we will actually uh, design for, uh, the band to be a uh, bigger diameter uh, to actually uh, uh, to reduce the impact of uh, slugging or design the pipeline with a bigger diameter. So it's either bigger diameter uh, pipeline size or the bigger radius, band radius, bigger band radius. <laughs> so it's different for band radius of pipeline, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, sebab so, uh, uh, kalau band tu kecil, then uh, dia akan cause that hammering because uh, slugging is due to the restriction that they uh, that they see at the band section lah. So uh. if uh, one of the uh, mitigation, the design of the band itself, kita besarkan band tu. So instead of uh, a 5D band, then we can uh, introduce a 10D band instead. And another method is actually to actually uh, design the pipeline itself, the sizing of the pipeline itself to be bigger. For example, um, for example, in Boko even, in PF429, we actually designed the pipeline. Uh, original size, it was uh, uh, 10 inch. We designed it to be 12 inch. And part of the reason is because we have a uh, sand issue in the pipeline and we want to reduce all those uh, uh, impact. Nah. So we designed it bigger. 
So so that what uh, let's say this issue happens, so you redesign for increase the uh, diameter of the pie. After that, you follow the uh, upper or scar flat design analysis software. Okay, uh, flat. Okay, flat is for installation. It's uh, oh, different. Yeah. Ah, the uh, when we talk about uh hammering, it's due to the design of the pipeline itself. Okay. Uh, just just nak nak tambah, uh, hammering ni uh, is more to design lah. Maksudnya uh, untuk installation tu uh, biasanya tak akan tak akan experience that hammering during installation lah. It is more to design and kalau kalau yeah. kalau hammering ni happen. Is during during the operation operation lah, oh. and then we tackle during the design. Correct. Correct. Okay. We can design it based on the data that we have, but usually, well, as they produce as they age, ah, uh, their punya ah uh, production also differs. Ah, uh, it may happens during operation as well. So, kalau it happens during operation, then perhaps design a new pipeline or change the band section, because when I was in ah uh, Sarawak also, we have ah uh, those hammering. It will cause even the top side to vibrate. So, bila uh, kita nampak vibration at top side, we know there's some hammering at the uh, at the bottom uh, of the seat as well. Run analysis, we cut off the band, change the band. That is one of the mitigations that we did now. Oh, okay. So, oh, I see. So, uh, basically, it's a lot of uh, hammering happen as the uh, plant offshore. Ah uh, no, usually ah uh, is is this is not a common ah uh, punya ah uh, problems that we see lah. Ah, uh, uh, that's why ah uh, because most of it we mitigate through ah uh, thorough analysis during the design stage. So designing the pipeline correct ah uh, is actually ah uh, very advantageous to ah uh, operation later lah. Ah uh, right. So we have the next questions. Ah uh, so it's ah uh, from the um. Student, I think so. Basically, is any changes happen uh, during the installations or during the bad weather? Uh, I think this one is installations uh, pipelines during the offshore. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you for the question. Uh, first, uh, during the planning, uh, we need to plan our offshore execution outside the monsoon. Meaning, uh, in Malaysia water, our calm weather. We consider calm weather from March to October. Okay. okay, so we try to avoid the uh, musim manje lah, uh, yeah. monsoon season to November <laughs> sampai uh, February monsoon season. So, mm -hmm. however, during that time, kita still ada adverse weather. Adverse weather ni macam sometime tiba-tiba uh, our weather pick up dekat offshore, we have a squall. Uh, so, I during that time, uh, if we encounter the weather hiccup, apa semua, that's why in our procedure, we have a uh, weather monitoring and limitation and our emergency pull out procedure. For example, eh, if this happen, so we will uh, pay, we will lay all the part line uh, to the seabed and then after weather become calm and then permitted weather, uh, we will come back and then we will recover the part line. Why? It's happened because we cannot hold the part line either flexible or rigid, especially rigid uh, for more than what we call allowable limit or duration it will uh, cause us potential uh, buckle uh, and then potential damage to the part line if our vessel cannot maintain the position. So our vessel capability if exceed the weather limitation or what we call cystic criteria for the vessel so our vessel cannot uh, stay in position so it will affect the movement of the part line. So to answer the question, first planning outside the monsoon. Second one, if uh, weather pick up, so we have our weather monitoring and also emergency procedure in our pro uh, uh, procedure lah. Okay, yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. So uh, we proceed for another question. Uh, for different sizing in one pipeline, how paging activity uh, will be done and is it using expandable pick or how? Okay, uh, uh, in summary, uh, normally, uh, it's not normally lah, uh, maybe team uh, part line can, uh, can elaborate further. Uh, from our uh, platform, piping from the launcher until part line will the same size. 
So our pig uh, will fit based on the same size. We have a, a normal uh, calculation. What is the size for pig? Normally in one size only lah. Uh, I pass to Pak Lai Tim to elaborate on that. <laughs> okay, actually uh, it depends on pipeline as well lah. Sebenarnya ada uh, some pipelines where they, we design it with uh, multi diameter. Kita panggil dia multi diameter. Uh, there, uh, in my experience before, there are some pipelines uh, called the multi diameter pick uh, that we can use to pick uh, this type of pipelines. But uh, it's pretty uh, risky because uh, it may cause pick to stuck in the pipeline. Uh, kalau pick to stuck dalam pipeline, then we cannot flow the pipeline. So uh, it's a risk to the to the operation as well. Lah. So usually pipeline is designed uh, with the same internal uh, diameter. Uh, so internal internal diameter dia mungkin uh, sama cuma uh, external diameter dia mungkin berbeza depends on whether you want to put insulation ke apa ke it depends on the ni lah uh, threads yang yang that pipeline might be seeing. But yeah we do have multi diameter pipeline or another method is also to use the foam pick lah to actually pick the pipeline because foam pick actually uh, it can it's, it's pretty compressible uh, to some extent. Uh. So that is another uh, method also now. But uh, to answer this uh, question, I think we really need to look into a uh, specific example lah sebenarnya. Hmm. Okay. Uh, to add for that, uh, we have the experience for the ni lah apa ni different size ni. Macam Siti Hawa cakap tadi, kita pakai yang uh, foam pick. Cuma from kita punya experience memang pick tu bila sampai memang Hancur lah biasanya. Memang kan? hancur. Dia yeah, 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 not recommended lah sebenarnya to have that yes. different size in in one part nine ni. Because yes, uh, satu monitoring, satu cleaning is not properly uh, mm -hmm. done lah. Tapi kalau Sam we uh, tak terpaksa that design then we have to lah. We have to yeah, do sometimes the, uh, the, when we design it for with multi diameter we'll just uh, label it as non pickable. So when it's non pickable then dia punya uh, methods uh, other other monitoring methods inspection methods dia akan berubah lah. Uh, so it depends case to case sebenarnya. Okay uh, so dekat dekat piping underwater tu ada buat maintenance ke any kind of yes. ya yeah, ada. Yes we do. Uh, the the thing uh, with pipeline is we want it to actually serve until it's design life but in, if possible, we want to squeeze it so that uh, we can uh, use it beyond its design life. It, this is business kan we are talking about. <laughs> so, kalau, lagi lama kita boleh guna lagi bagus. So, yes, uh, frequent uh, apa maintenance is conducted, inspection is conducted to ensure that uh, these pipelines can serve uh, as much as we need it to. Uh, so for underwater, what we conduct is uh, kalau external we do visual inspection uh, and uh, also we do our, our CP step, uh, cathodic protection to check the cathodic protection and this is these are usually conducted by divers and also the ROV unit yang tadi uh, tunjuk tu, uh, we have the CP ROV to actually uh, do the underwater inspection. For uh, pipeline inside internal, uh, part of it is we do uh, apa intelligent pigging. Ah, babi yang bijak. <laughs> so this uh, intelligent pigging ni, uh, uh, we can actually check its corrosion, uh, internal uh, and external corrosion. We can check whether it has a crack. We can check whether uh, apa, uh, it depends. But some of the pipelines, for example, the non-metallic pipeline, yang plastik je tadi, there's no corrosion, it is designed for uh, not to be inspected with uh, IP lah. Ah, so, dia punya inspection method also different. Uh, yeah, so different pipelines, uh, we have different uh, apa ins inspection maintenance plan. But this is solely uh, depends on the design of the pipeline and the requirement of it. Okay, thank you uh, Miss uh, Hawa for the great explanation about uh, answering the question. So it could like we cover all of the question in our Zoom chat box. So to the last one, uh, to our guest speaker, is it there anything uh, you wanted to cover before we end of the uh, sessions? Uh, 
uh, before when I get the offer letter, yes. <laughs> okay, my background is mechanical engineering. So when I get the offer letter, pipeline engineering, I'm macam pelik, apa tu pipeline kan? <laughs> Sebab it's not, uh, when you graduated as a civil engineer, what you think in your mind is I will become a construction engineer. Or uh, I will do construction thingy related lah kan? But we do have people from uh, different backgrounds. We have civil engineers, we have chemical engineers, uh, myself mechanical engineers as part of the pipeline team as well. So uh uh my opinion uh for all the students uh always keep uh, your options uh, open and this kind of uh, platforms sharing platforms right this kind of uh upper conference is actually very beneficial for you to open up to the industry so thank you very much to the uh, organizer uh to the coordinator of this event for inviting us as well thank you all right uh, thank you. Any 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 guest speaker wanted to say any? Uh, okay. Uh, me and uh, Aima, my co commentary, uh, we want to say thank you to uh, the UTHM for giving us opportunity for this agenda lecture, and also uh, we we'll do apologize if there's any shortcoming from our side lah. Kalau ada kekurangan tu, uh, harap dimaafkan lah. Semoga kita boleh berjumpa lagi uh, in the next next session, kan? Sharing from us, from the industry, kan? What what what, what we have uh, here, we can uh, share to the students and also to university. Hope it beneficial lah to uh, to your side lah. Okay. Okay. Uh, terima kasih. Uh, terima kasih kepada semua. Uh, guest speaker pada hari ini. Uh, so uh, bila saya lihat uh, sharing session yang sangat menarik, uh, video yang sangat menarik, uh, saya pun mudah faham. Saya juga daripada uh, mechanical background. Ini adalah program daripada civil. So basically kita mau uh, banyak joint venture jugalah. So uh, actually um, terima kasih banyak. I quite um, proud of you all. Uh, and your team sebab tengok hard work job scope pun memang kena job scope memang hard work level so I hope that our students learn new things uh, toward your uh, sharing session today about the uh, installation pipeline in the offshore also in the uh, for the shallow and deep water pipeline so thank you very much again uh, for the our speaker so I conclude that so this uh, discussion today actually the uh, we able to know about the pipeline installations started with installation method you have the uh, shallow water deep water we have the uh, SLA, JLA, real and also towing method and then uh, installation analysis uh, using the software or car flag or uh, using one of the finite element maybe somehow this can uh, useful some knowledge for the our students to gather for your actually for the um, side of the engineering uh, civil engineering code and standard regulation when you apply in this uh, in this standard for the pipeline installation and design also involve the plan schedule, what the report, the, what's out the autobus, right? Autobus is, I'm not mistaken, uh, Cik Fuzairil uh, mentioned that. So, uh, thank you very much uh, from us. Uh, terima kasih banyak sudi memberi uh, uh, sharing pengalaman kepada pelajar-pelajar, especially pelajar civil di uh, faculty, uh, FTK, Faculty Engineering Technology. So thank you very much, everyone. So I um, I pass to the MC. Okay, thank you, Tanjis Doctor Nick Nomunira Mat Hassan as the moderator for this slot, and thank you to the speakers for the very detailed and interesting presentation. Also, answers that were convincing enough to address all the past participant concerns. Hopefully, all of you are able to gain benefit from the information shared by our speakers throughout this slide. Next, we will be having an online photography session. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly switch on your camera and see you. In count of three, three, one.
Next. Three, two, one. As the saying goes, to every beginning there is an ending. Now looks like we have reached to the end of our slot with Petronas. Thank you everyone for your cooperation and thank you so much to our speakers and moderator for gracing our slot this morning with your presence. Before I end my duty as your MC, kindly ensure that all participants fill up the attendance form as per attached in the checkbox. Zoom or Facebook comment. So I'm Iman and my duty as your MC and on behalf of the organizing committees, I would like to apologize if we have ever made any mistakes throughout the slot. Thank you and stay tuned on slot 8 this evening at 2 p.m. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Terima kasih. Terima kasih.